Good evening there everybody. What is happening? Hopefully y'all are having a wonderful day today. So when it comes down to it, I thought of course that I would finally give my final fight preview, my final fight prediction, and my final fight uh, pre-fight breakdown of that of the excellent fight, the quote-unquote fight of the decade between that of Terrence Bud Crawford and Errol Spence Jr., and of course, for those of you that have not been paying attention to that of the boxing scene, uh, this fight is about to occur this Saturday night, I believe, on that of July 29th. And of course, as I called it earlier, the quote-unquote fight of the decade, there has been a lot of hype behind this fight, and for great reason. Uh, Terrence Bud Crawford pretty much got his start to the top 10 pound for pound list, at least debatably, several years ago, really actually closer to 10 years ago now, all the way back in 2014, I believe when he was able to defeat the undefeated Cuban fighter, that of Yoyorkas Gamboa, uh, somewhat being a unified champion or becoming a unified champion at that of the lightweight division or 135 pounds. Errol Spence, of course, will come a few years later on, and he's really only had work within one weight division. But either or, this pretty much was a clash that was eventually going to happen. I think that Errol Spence, at least at the beginning of his career, he was looked at as a guy that had more grand potential. But as time grew along, Terrence Bud Crawford ended up being a little bit better and greater than what a lot of people, even including myself, once upon a time thought that he was going to be. Because pretty much every challenge that Terrence Bud Crawford has ever been in the ring with, he's pretty much passed with flying colors. Now, in my view, uh, partially, uh, that is partial due to him being such a great fighter and having such great adaptation and boxing IQ. Uh, another partial side of that is also because I don't think that he's faced the level of competition on average as what Errol Spence has within his past several fights. Just my personal opinion of it. But, of course, talking about the fight... Who do I personally believe is going to win? Who has what advantages in this fight? And we're going to break that down. But this fight really reminds me a lot of the Roberto Duran versus Sugar Ray Leonard fight. Now, of course, there's not necessarily the size disadvantage there. Certain people, of course, would say that Errol Spence is going to have the size advantage here. And he might just by a little bit. But the reason why I compare it to the Sugar Ray Leonard versus Roberto Duran fight is is because Earl Spence Jr. is going to be the guy, like Roberto Duran, who pretty much is going to have the hands of stone, and both fighters somewhat have hands of stone, make no mistake about it, but Earl Spence is going to have to be the fighter that is going to have to really make this fight uncomfortable, especially in the up-close and mid-range. He is going to have to keep Terrence Bud Crawford honest the whole entire time, and Terrence Bud Crawford is going to have to keep Earl Spence Jr. honest as well just in a completely different way. I think that if you're Terrence Bud Crawford, that you're going to have to try and utilize your superior feet, or when I say superior feet, I'm talking about quicker feet. Uh, I think that Terrence Bud Crawford, just like Sugar Ray Leonard against that of Roberto Duran and the majority of his opponents, that he was going to have the foot speed and that of the hand speed advantage. But kind of like Sugar Ray Leonard with Mr. Terrence Bud Crawford, he has a little bit of a bad habit with getting hit a little bit too often. Even though both Sugar Ray Leonard and Terrence Bud Crawford, because they're both slick black fighters, they both get credited for their great defense. Really, neither of those fighters, when it comes down to it, were as great as defensive fighters as what you would see from, say, of that as a Floyd Mayer the Jr. or, say, a Pernell Sweet P. Whitaker. You know, or even if we're going to go as far as, say, Canelo Alvarez, even though certain people you know, may dislike that, but it is what it is. But at the end of the day, Terrence Bud Crawford, he's still a very good defensive fighter, but he does get hit in a certain amount of exchanges. It is going to be very interesting because I also thought the same thing about Mr. Nooya in a way in the most recent fight when he was about to fight Steve Von Fulton. And of course, for those of you that ended up seeing my prediction about that, I ended up getting it wrong because I predicted in a way to lose that fight, I believe by unanimous decision. And the reason why I thought that was is because I thought that he was just a little bit too hittable. I thought him going up at the weight class and immediately fighting Fulton, I thought that it was going to benefit Fulton. Of course, I ended up being devastatingly wrong. And that was a fight that a lot of us, you know, definitely thought could have went either way. But it was so impressive the way that Mr. Inouye, the way that he was able to really beat Steve on Fulton with relative ease. I don't think that this is going to be one of those fights. I don't think that it's going to be a fight where either side, in my personal view, has relative ease, whether a knockout here happens or not. I think that both fighters are going to win certain battles in the fight. 
The big question is, once again, is who is going to win the war? And that's why I like this little slogan right here, somebody's going to break. Because when it comes to big fights like these, it pretty much is all about that. It pretty much is a game of chicken. Who is going to break first? That's why, once again, I compare a lot of these big bouts to that of the great 2008 film, that of the Dark Knight, or a superhero battle, or superhero comics. Because basically, what that movie was about between that of the Joker and Batman, and the reason why that movie was so much greater than so many other movies than that of the Joker or Batman is because... It finally really showed the Joker's true potential to push Batman to his limits, to possibly even make the mentally strong Batman and the guy who looks almost unbeatable even push him to his limits. And at the end of that movie, he ended up even losing the war against the Joker because he transformed Harvey Dent into a monster, which was his whole goal or one of his goals the whole entire time. But enough overall pretty much of the introduction. Who do I personally have winning this fight? Who do I believe is going to quote-unquote break first in this fight? I believe more than likely that Errol Spence is going to be the victor. Now, this is a fight that easily could go either way. It's an extraordinarily tough fight to predict. And either fighter that you could potentially be going for, in my view, you can't say that that person is definitively wrong. But there is a few reasons as to why I am going with Errol Spence Jr. for this fight. Do I think it's because that he has a major size advantage or, you know, because I think he's that much better than Terrence? Not necessarily, but I do think that he is better than Terrence Bud Crawford in certain areas where I think that it counts. I think that Errol Spence has more power. I think that he has a better chin. And on top of that, I think that he is the better defensive fighter. Uh, people, of course, take a look at Terrence Bud Crawford and they look at him as a very highly skilled fighter. And he is a very highly skilled fighter, but if there's actually one area, in my view, where Terrence has been slightly overrated in the past, it's his defensive ability. Uh, he's a great fighter, but he does get hit a little bit too much for my liking, uh, especially straight down the pipe with certain left and right crosses, depending on the fighter. Uh, you can see pretty much in every single one of his fights that he is going to get hit, hit flush uh, a few times here and there. Uh, and Errol Spence, in my view... It isn't like he's never gotten hit. It isn't like he, you know, hasn't gotten hit before. But Errol Spence has a better chin than Terrence Bud Crawford, in my view. So if the two do end up getting in an exchange, and I believe that Errol Spence more than likely is going to prey on Terrence Bud Crawford in certain exchanges, and that he is going to try and take advantage of certain exchanges and maybe catch Terrence Bud Crawford with his quote-unquote pants down or with his hands down, if we want to put a better saying out there. Uh, I think more than likely that Errol Spence is going to be waiting for an opportune time to possibly get Terrence Bud Crawford with a very good shot. And, you know, when it comes to big fights like these, it's really the question about not if you're going to get hit, but it's really when are you going to get hit. And I'm not saying that Terrence Bud Crawford cannot take a relative punch. I'm not saying that, but I have seen him hurt several times in his career. I've seen him hurt very badly against Yorkas Gamboa. I seen him hurt very badly against Aegis Kavalaskis. I actually thought that he got knocked down in that fight. I seen him hurt a little bit. <coughs> excuse me. I seen him hurt a little bit against Felix Diaz, and I believe I seen him hurt in another fight as well. I just don't personally remember what the fight was. But the thing is about Terence Bud Crawford, in my view, and the reason why this fight is so hard to predict is because Terence Bud Crawford really hasn't been in the ring with anyone yet, in my view, to really prepare him quite for the level of that of an Errol Spence Jr. But I thought something very similar of Mr. Nooya Inoue, or Inoue, however you pronounce his name, with that against Steve Von Fulton. And it turned out that Inoue ended up proving that uh, he was going to pull out the best performance of his career. His level changes were the best that I had ever seen. His head movement was the best that I had ever seen. His defense was the best that I had ever seen. So the question is about Mr. Terrence Bud Crawford, because in order to win this fight, this is what he is going to have to do. Uh, is his defense going to be better than what I've ever seen in any of his prior fights? Uh, is his overall uh, maneuverability going to be better than what I've seen? And his maneuverability is very good. The advantages that Terrence Bud Crawford is going to have in this fight, in my view, is going to be the foot speed. It's going to be the hand speed. It's more than likely going to be the head movement. If there is a few weaknesses about that of Errol Spence, at least compared to Terrence Bud Crawford, at times, he has a very big problem with not moving his head down the line or not moving his head off the center line. Excuse me. Uh, he's not as quick as Terrence Bud Crawford in either the feet or that of the hands uh, when it comes down to it. And I also believe that Terrence Bud Crawford 
you could debate that he adapts a little bit better on the fly and on top of that that he has better counter punching placement uh, but Errol Spence is going to be really trying for that at Terrence Bud Crawford uh, and he's going to go for a very early on body attack and if you're Terrence Bud Crawford uh, you would also uh, be very intelligent to go for a very early on body attack as well but if you're Terrence Bud Crawford you mainly want this fight on the outside and within that of the mid range with you kind of pushing Errol Spence back you know, and keeping him, you know, within your safe zone, you know, or keeping him honest, you know, with that lead jab, you know, maybe double it up at times, triple it up, get that left hand down to the body, you know, utilize a good right hook uh, here and there. Terrence Bud Crawford has a very good right hook. Like I said, if you're Terrence Bud Crawford, in my personal view, the areas of which you want this fight are especially within that of the mid range. Uh, with you using your feet to move in and outside of the range, move laterally, and make sure that Errol Spence does not get within uh, your up-close range because he has very devastating power. Uh, and on top of that, when it comes down to it, he can be a very good counter-puncher on the inside, and he has a very vicious body attack. So like I said, if you're Terrence Bud Crawford, you have to pretty much maneuver uh, you know, from that of the outside, uh, you know, kind of in uh, from that you know, early positioning. Uh, you may have to start off a bit stronger than what you usually do in the majority of fights. Because even though Terrence Bud Crawford usually comes back very well in the second half of the fight, if, <coughs> excuse me, if Errol Spence Jr., let's just say, for example, ends up taking three out of the first four rounds, it's going to be very interesting to see how Terrence Bud Crawford comes back. Because in my view, he's going to have to be a little bit more offensive. And sometimes, you know, that's good. But Terrence Bud Crawford, like I said, He's not a Floyd Mayer the Jr. He's not someone that, in my view, is as defensively sound as what some people would really think that he is. He is going to get hit with a certain amount of those punches, even at the best of times. So like I said, is he going to be able to, you know, be able to be less hittable in this fight? And if he does get hit, is he going to be able to take some of those good punches from Errol Spence Jr.? Or what if Errol Spence lands a good punch down the middle? hurts him very badly. Is Terrence going to be able to recover the same way like he's been able to do against other fighters? We'll see. We'll see. Another question that I also have is that will Terrence Bud Crawford, and he has great power, both fighters have great power, uh, but will his power affect Errol Spence Jr. the same way that Errol Spence will affect Terrence Bud Crawford's? Now, if Terrence has near the same level of power as Errol Spence Jr., and if he's actually able to evade the majority of the punches, I would pick Terrence Bud Crawford to win the fight. But the thing is about Errol Spence Jr. is that I'm not quite sure if he's really going to acquiesce to Terrence Bud Crawford's power quite so well as what some of the other fighters have. And on top of that, he's very defensively responsible. Uh, he's very intuitive and very good in terms of defending both to the body and up top. He has a very good defense. And in my opinion, he's the slightly better defensive fighter out of the two fighters. And like I said, he, in my view, packs more of a punch. So he's going to make this fight very difficult for Terrence Bud Crawford more than likely. Uh, once again, I would not be surprised if Terrence Bud Crawford ended up winning this fight. But the reason why I'm going to throw spins is because I do believe that the pressure, I think that the power... And I think that the defense more than likely is going to win Errol Spence today, whether it be eight rounds to four or seven rounds to five. And if a later round stoppage somewhere around anywhere from, you know, rounds, you know, eight to round 11, I wouldn't be surprised either. Now, if Terrence Bud Crawford ended up getting a knockout, I also would not be surprised. But if you're Terrence Bud Crawford and if you're trying to win this fight, you have to really win that battle in the beginning, in my view, with the jab. You have to try to get that left hand straight down the pipe, a good one-two, and then get the hell out of dodge. You have to always move laterally. You have to be moving in this fight, but you also can't show Errol Spence Jr. that you're too afraid of his power. We've seen what happened with Steve on Fulton today, and he pretty much was afraid of Mr. Nooya in a way as soon as in a way showed that he had a competent jab. And once in a way showed that he had a competent jab, that fight was over, uh, you know, when it came down to it. So Terrence is always going to have to keep Errol Spence honest, not only by moving around him uh, and showing the superior speed with his feet and his hands uh, and his, you know, alleged better maneuverability. Uh, but on top of that, he's going to have to do some very good body work. And he's going to have to really limit the amount of hits that he takes. In my view, Terrence is going to have to try and start off a little bit stronger in this fight, in my personal view. Now, if you're Errol Spence Jr., what do you want to do? In my opinion, you know, you want to double up that jab. You want to try to really get Terrence Bud Crawford either up against the ropes or in certain exchanges. Keep the phone booth up when it comes down to it. Keep the phone up 
to that of the ear, as certain boxing analysts would say, meaning keep your hands up while also throwing certain punches. You may be able to catch Terrence Bud Crawford with a good left straight down the pipe or a good hook, you know, when it comes down to it. Start off with a very good body attack. I've not seen many boxers try and attack Terrence Bud Crawford's body. Now, he does have very decent counters for it, uh, so Errol Spence will have to watch out for that as well. Uh, you know, oftentimes he may go with a left cross down or a right hook. He's also very good at feints, Mr. Terrence Bud Crawford is. So Errol Spence is really going to have to pull out a performance here. But both fighters are pretty good at feints from what I've seen. Once again, the reason why I'm going with Errol Spence Jr. is the slightly better defense, in my view, more power, and on top of that, the better chin. And like I said, whenever it comes to these type of fights, it's not about if you're going to get hit, it's when you're going to get hit. So like I said, we'll see what happens here. Uh, it will also depend on who, in my view, has the better feints and, you know, who, of course, will be willing to establish their boxing game plan. But if you're Errol Spence, you want to take up certain exchanges within that of the mid-range, but really always try to be up in Terrence Bud Crawford's grill. I also believe that it's possible that Errol Spence Jr.'s experience against that of higher class competition, that it also might win him the day. But just to talk about the possibilities, whoever were to win this fight, who do I believe, uh, you know, if Terrence Bud Crawford were to win this fight, what do I believe it would mean for him? I would mean, I think that it would mean more than likely, at least in my view, that he would probably have to be the undisputed number one pound for pound fighter because then he would have finally beat that 50-50 level fight uh, against a true level monster fighter. Uh, on top of that, he would be undisputed within two weight classes and he would defeat someone that, in my view, is top five pound for pound on Errol Spence Jr. If Errol Spence Jr. ends up winning the fight, uh, you could certainly debate that he's also number one pound for pound. Uh, but, you know, he would be right there with Canelo in a way and some others. And the reason why that is is because he just doesn't have any proof outside of that welterweight division. So, like I said, we would have to see. But he certainly could be debated as the number one pound for pound fighter. I'm just not quite sure if it would be undisputed. In my view, it'd be more for Terrence. But, you know, you never know. We'll see uh, when it comes down. I could possibly change my mind about that because I certainly understand the perspective. Now, what does this especially mean for Terrence Bud Crawford if he ends up losing the fight? Because a lot of people have alleged once again over the years that Terrence Bud Crawford has been allegedly the number one pound for pound fighter. I've never personally agreed with that uh, in completion. And the reason why that is, is because, like I said, I always thought that he had a little bit of a lack of the resume against clear A great caliber fighters. Well, to me, it would just mean that, you know, even though he's still a great fighter, then in my view, he never really truly was in that debate as the true number one pound for pound fighter. Just my personal view, because Canelo Alvarez, Andre Ward, uh, you know, even Vasily Lomachenko at one point in time, they all won somewhat of their 50-50 fights, or at least they gave it a very great effort uh, when it came down to it, you know, especially Canelo and Andre Ward. Even in a way, you know, today, you could debate him right now as the current number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter because he just completely trashed his alleged 50-50 opponent, and we know that Fulton was a true A-grade level fighter, and in a way made it look completely like he was an amateur. So if Terrence Bud Crawford loses this fight, uh, what it would mean to me is that he never truly was in that actual conversation as the number one pound for pound fighter, especially in terms of resume, just in my view. And if you're one of the new media guys or LDBC guys, one of the channels that I also like to review, like Dante's Box of Nation or that of Aki TV, what it should mean is that, according to their standards, is that Terrence Bud Crawford's career basically has been a quote unquote failure or that overall that he was the most overrated fighter of his time because Gennady Golovkin, from what we all remember, he ended up losing to Canelo Alvarez, even though depending on the day, at times they'll say he either won or lost the fight, depending on whether they want to tear down Canelo or Golovkin, depending on the day. But if Terrence Bud Crawford loses this fight, what it should mean, because these standards were associated with Gennady Golovkin and other fighters that they did not like, and they would have been associated with Mr. Nooya in a way, uh, had no Oya in a way lost the fight against Steve on Fulton. So what it should mean is that if Terrence Bud Crawford loses this fight, that his career has been a complete failure. At least those are the those are the LDBC and no media standards for other fighters. You know, in my view, it wouldn't mean that, but for them, at least according to other fighters that are not black fighters, those are the standards that they set. So we'll see. 
But anyways, that's pretty much about it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I do have Errol Spence Jr. More than likely winning this fight by unanimous decision. If he ended up winning it by later stoppage, say once again at around 8 or, or 10, uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised at all. But I have Errol Spence winning by decision. More than likely, I think Terrence Bud Crawford will be smart enough and crafty enough more than likely to squeak out, you know, and survive the fight. But once again, I wouldn't be surprised at all if Terrence Bud Crawford won the fight. But I would have to see better defense from him and such superior foot speed and, you know, timing. And on top of that, his power affecting Errol Spence to such a great degree uh, to where, you know, it would pretty much limit Errol Spence Jr. to pretty much, you know, trying to force him, uh, you know, on the inside or keeping him mid-range. If he can keep Errol Spence Jr. in the mid-range, Terrence Bud Crawford will win the fight. Uh, but I'm not quite sure if that's going to happen. So we'll see. But anyways, that's pretty much about it for today. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll talk to you all later.